We're two days away from the big one, Wilder Fury 3. We had the press conference yesterday. Now, usually, you know, when these press conferences happen, everyone's asking who got the better of who. And if you're a Wilder fan, you're going to say Wilder got the better of Fury. And if you're a Fury fan, you're going to say Fury got the better of Wilder. And a lot of times, you know, we ask questions, who got in, in whose head? Uh, what's the psychological, uh, you know, thought process in either man's head right now going into this big fight on Saturday? I just want to go around the panel and just ask everyone, what did you think of this press conference? And did anything surprise you? And do you did you see anything that you feel may play a factor in the fight? Because usually these things really don't play a factor in the fight. And, you know, these guys got to do it with their hands, not with their mouths. Comes Wasn't uh, as good as I thought it was going to be starting out, you know, um, but Fury did get Wilder to open up a little bit and they did exchange at the end, which I think was pretty good. Um, that's always good for the fight, you know, to sell the fight. You want to hear from both fighters. You want to see him get a little angry, maybe a little back and forth. Um no face off. Bob Aram gets a little upset about them even suggesting that happening, which <laughs> I thought was pretty good too. But uh, overall, I mean, I felt like uh, at the end they picked up the pace and I was satisfied with what I seen. Uh, but you're right, B. Most of the time, you know, when people make things about, well, who won the press conference? Like, that doesn't even matter at the end of the day. You know, this is just the final opportunity to to sell the fight to anybody who's kind of on the fence about it, I guess. And um, I think they probably got quite a few people to decide to get the fight with the exchange they had at the end. I thought that was pretty good. I mean, they got Wilder to talk, which was nice. They got him to talk because it's like, you know, what's the point in having a press conference if one of the guys ain't going to talk? So they got him to talk. And it's just like, it's just like G Funky said it, that, you know, people always draw conclusions about the press conference, but ultimately he said, uh, G Funky said it, Ishay Smith said it earlier today on Twitter also that you can't really go off of press conferences. The only thing I'll say is it, it was entertaining. I like that Fury put him on the spot and he asked the hard questions. And, you know, we could all sit here and be Dr. Phil about Wilder's mannerisms and the fact that, look, he did ask you some relevant questions. He did because JD's was there when his hands were wrapped. And he still has a job, you know, so do you really believe what you've been saying since October of last year? Or, you know, is this a marketing tool you're using? What is this? Is this you trying to cope with the loss? Because he asked them some really relevant questions. It's, it's it, all of it are things that we've all discussed on our channels. Like, you know, you're, you're implicating Kenny Bayless, Anthony Durrell, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the World Boxing Council, a member of your team and Mark Breland, it's like, yo, dog, like, th there's better ways to fix a fight, you know. There are more practical ways of fixing a fight than what you're describing. So I like that he brought it up, though, ultimately, just like G Funky says, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it all boils down to what happens in a fight. And then we're not going to know that until Saturday night. You know, I think Deontay definitely looked more confident uh, than he did in the last press conference. Um, I mean, he did not look very confident to me at all uh, last time, you know. Uh, I think the time delay, so to speak, has done him some good. It's given him a little bit more time to train, uh, you know. Apparently, he's upped his one rep max from a amazing 315 to an even more amazing 320. Uh, so that that was good, you know. Um and, you know, last time, let's face it, I mean, we had the Wakanda suit. We had Mark Breland threw in the towel because of his uh, allegiances to the all right, we know We know all this, baby. <laughs> Don't go through the revisionist <laughs> history. I didn't need to go through all of it, but what I we will We know it all, man. Don't what, be a dead will, horse, brother. What I will say, what I will say is this. Uh, I counted about 10 excuses. Uh, there have been a lot more, but just 10 that I reviewed pretty much on my channel on Monday. And in the last press conference, rather than address these things, rather than answer for things that came out of his own mouth, uh, things that were reported by major news outlets, uh, he put his fucking headphones on and re refused to participate. Okay, well, you know, apparently silence is golden is the quote I heard yesterday. Uh, well, why didn't you keep your mouth shut then when it came to Mark Breland and everything else? Why wasn't silence golden then? Uh, apparently silence wasn't golden then when you're throwing him under the bus and, you know, coming up with 
that's already been addressed. I mean, that that's already been addressed. And I mean, like I said, come come Saturday, none of that's going to matter, man. No, it's not going to matter because that's he's why, getting, that's because why I think getting. that's why I think he he's saying to himself, in my opinion, mm. why even talk about this stuff anymore? I said it. And now I'm just gonna back it up in the ring. I, well, I don't think he wants to go back and forth and and just well, have to repeat himself because you know if, no, if my thing is it's not repeating himself, Joe. With all due respect, because he has yet to answer questions related yeah. to any of the allegations that he threw out there. Yeah. He's not repeating himself. I'm still waiting for his answers about these various things. Now, okay, you know uh, he doesn't have to answer it. That's fine. But I think that the question that Tyson Fury posed was a question that's on a lot of people's minds. You know, if you believe in all of these allegations, why the hell did you need to re rejig your training staff? You know, and the reply was a question, you know, as D-Style pointed out to me yesterday when we spoke about it. And then I saw it uh, for myself. Uh, you know, um, psychologically, I'm just going to say this. If you believe in what you say, you don't run from what you say. You know, and if you believe in what you say, uh, well, you know what? You're probably not going to do too well come Saturday because apparently the only reason Tyson Fury won last time was because of spiked water, egg weights, a Wakanda suit, a disloyal trainer, the Kronk gym, uh, and everything else. Oh, I forgot white privilege. That was a major one, you know. Kenny Bayless, too. Crab in the bucket the crab referee, the, Kenny the, Bayless. The crab, the crab in the bucket, uh, you know, black man, self-hating black man, Kenny, Kenny you Bailey. Know what I mean? Anthony you know? Durrell all, also, don't forget that, Anthony Durrell. He was in on it too because but, he was sitting behind Mark yeah. Breland. That was Ricky Haddon who taught the team how to how to manipulate gloves. Don't forget Ricky. He's yeah, in but, this too. But uh, you know red meat, red red meat for the Fury fans. Red meat. It, it, it is our primal instinct, right? To that we got from our ancestors to to make something out of the, you know, like when you see gorillas fight, what do they do? They size each other up, like, like you know, what I mean, all that other shit. Bulls do it, and you know, but that's low level kind of of battling instincts. Like to me, sizing each other up doesn't mean anything to me in a sport like boxing, which is the sweet science now. It, it is done at a very high level. And that that's what we're talking about. So so these these mind games, these these, you know, first of all, even if I did believe in mind games and all that, I, I wouldn't try to figure Fury out anyway, because I, I obviously can't figure him out. Right. He's too erratic to too irrational to uh, sometimes he's totally rational. So so he's just somebody that I can't quite figure out. Uh, so what I will say is this. I, I do agree with with, with uh, what Ring IQ said. I'm glad Wilder actually said something this time. Okay, I'm glad they went back and forth. And I will say this as well. I thought uh, I forget her name. Uh, the Kate lady Ab that did. Kate the, Abdo. Kate Abdo. Yeah. I think she did just fine. I don't know what Bob Aaron was even crying about. I think it gives ammunition <laughs> to the narrative. It gives ammunition to the narrative that the media is out here to get Wilder and. So, so when they see Aaron complaining that, oh, she was being too uh, biased for Wilder, it doesn't help anything. It doesn't help matters. And, and I think it was a little too bent out of shape over a possible face-off. Like, well, you should have been ready for that. People want to see a face-off. So arrange it. Stop being cheap asses. Get security. Okay? Mm -hmm. Get a couple fighters in the middle or something. We need some type of face-off. Get one of those glass that they use for Mayorga and and – you know, and, and uh, it was Mayorga and Vargas. Vargas. Right? Like, they, like, figure it out, dude. Make it possible for them yeah. to fix each other off. So I'm being a cheap ass and yelling at Fox Sports because she understood that there was going to be a face-off, right? I get it. We're fresh off the Canelo, you know, plant thing. You don't want these guys to get in a fist fight on the stage, and it, it, then everybody loses a shitload of money, right? Like, I get it. But, but you should have had all that in place. Plus... If if I'm not mistaken, I saw Fury walk on the podium over to Bob and say, "Why not?" That's what I saw him do. Yeah, Fury didn't have an understanding that that it was obvious that there was going to be no face off. So like like stop acting like it was obvious. And Jesus, Bob, I know you're going to croak any day. 
Okay. Whoa. You don't have to say like everything that's on your mind. Stop calling really? ladies broads. Okay. No filter. Thing, okay. And then he said, fuck her. Come on. That was a little too much. Yeah. He needs to apologize to her. And, and to, I think everybody goes on the old grandpa, insane grandpa pass. No, I can't. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's just a matter of perspective, right? On how you see it. Obviously, like you said in the beginning, you know, if you're a Fury fan, you're going to think Fury had the edge. If you're a Wilder fan, you're going to think Wilder has the edge. Obviously, I'm a Wilder fan, no secret. Um, and I think that he conducted himself uh, as I expected, you know, trying not to get involved with the back and forth. He knew that Fury was going to come in and try to get a rise out of him and bring up the allegations and stuff like that. At the end of the day, we're three days. At that point, it was three days away from the fight. So you're going to sit up there and go back and forth and, and, and talk about the allegations. I understand people want uh, clarification. You know, they want to they want to hear you speak on it. But it it's just going to make it go in a direction that it doesn't really need to go down. Um, for me, I feel like Tyson Fury, in my opinion, honestly, I, I think he showed a bit of nervous energy, constantly pacing the floor, standing up behind in the chair. I caught him at one point like molesting the chair. Literally, like rubbing the chair up and down, up and down, then walked over to the side, put hand sanitizer on, came back and started clenching the chair again. So, you know, I noticed certain things like that. And Deontay was sitting there chilling the entire time. Um, I feel like he was just I, I originally when he came up, I thought, I don't think he's going to speak again because he had his headphones on. Yeah. Um, but I think that he has a mutual respect for Kate. I really do believe that. Yep. And he wanted to try to do the right thing and, and try to do his little piece. Um, but, you know, I was a little bit disappointed with there not being a face off. And I understand that, oh, you know, they don't want uh, something to happen because of plan and Canelo. Like, I get that. But this is a heavyweight trilogy match. How are you not going to have a face off? How are you not having like, you know, security prepared, stand by? Like, let's do this. I, I For me, it's just a bit disappointing. Hopefully we get a face off at the weigh in because for me, I know some people think it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but for me it matters yeah, because like that's it. when you really see when they look into each other's eyes, like who's really scared. You know what I mean? And for me, that was very, very disappointing and have Bob Arum down, you know, at the bottom of the stage saying, no, 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 no face off. It was like, who, who died and made you God, Bob Arum? Why do you, why do you get to make all the ultimate decisions? I mean, how many promotional companies do we have involved in this fight? And you're the one, that that has all the say and so to to to, de, to uh d style's point you know like you don't get some old man crazy pass where you can just hoot and holler above everybody and people are just going to accept it like I, for me man i've been dealing with and, and talking about bob aram for shit over a better part of a decade and co to be completely honest with you like i'm over it i i kind of saw it the same way and it's interesting that um amanda vine talked about uh the nervous energy from from Fury because I saw the same thing. I saw he was, you know, talking about he wasn't going to sit down and he was trying to crack these little one liners and jokes and things of that nature and they were falling off on deaf ears. And Deontay wasn't. I didn't think Deontay was going to say anything the whole time. Then eventually he starts going back and forth with him, and that's exactly what Fury wanted. He was not comfortable. I don't. I don't know if he's not comfortable with the fight or the buildup or what, but he was not comfortable until Deontay started to say something back. Like I said, he would try to have these little, uh, these, these philosophical quotes about, you know, mental health and having a coal in your hand and all this other stuff. And it was crickets in there. And he, you know, he would, he would ask questions to Deontay or nobody in particular. It was just, I felt like he was trying to go back to the well of let's make this a circus. Because if he was able to make it a circus, mentally, that's where he wants Deontay Wilder. He wants him um, not focus on the task at hand. He's, he wants to let him get in a shouting match and things of that nature. And he tried everything he could to get into that. And then towards the end, Deontay started getting back and forth with that. But I didn't even think it was the same as uh, – I think this was before the first fight. Maybe the second fight. What was No, it was the first fight when they, they – did. remember the, the clip where – they're in Brooklyn and they, they did that stupid uh, when you move, I move or whatever. I said, I thought that was really funny. Oh, I thought it was funny too. No, I laughed when it happened. I thought it was 
corny on Fury's part, but it, it still made me chuckle, right? But I think that's like what Fury wanted, or he wanted the the when they got in the shoving match in the last, like he wanted the circus, and Deontay wasn't giving it to him, and when he wasn't giving it to him, he's like, oh, all right, I don't know what to do next here. I'll just you know do whatever. So, uh, one thing that I will say is <clears throat> about the press conference. I like many of you believe that Wilder wasn't going to talk. I wasn't sure because I'm like, well, he ain't talk at the first one and he talked at this one. But one thing that I thought was kind of a tell is he actually said it himself. He wasn't going to talk. Something that Fury said set him off because he said it like, yeah, I wasn't even going to talk. Mm. And then before you know it, they're going back and forth. If you've been watching Fury whole career, he didn't do nothing yesterday that he hasn't already done in a bunch of other fights. That's what he did at the at what was supposed to be the David Hay fight. That's what he did at the Klitschko fight. That's what he did at the set. Like, he always looked nervous because yeah. he's a fidgety guy. Like, when don't he look nervous? He looked nervous at his house with his wife. The man yeah, looked yeah, nervous. He, to me, he does, he exhibits uh, it. He has, like, ADHD for yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, 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 he moves like a kid that's on Ritalin. That's, that's fury that I see. That, like, I see that he's trying to go to the well. I do agree with that, that you're trying to revisit the energy that you had from the first two fights. I see you're trying to go there. But... I saw it very different for Wilder because I'm thinking to myself, yo, if I thought a dude hit me with like a locker or a shoehorn or just something, he hit me with something, he cheated basically. I feel like you cheated me. His body language don't, t didn't it, for me, it didn't tell me that. Like you That's sitting ridiculous. down. It was an egg weight. It was exactly, <laughs> egg weight. He hit him with an Easter egg weight or whatever, right? <laughs> Bang. The body language that he showed me, it's like you've been in a nurturing environment all this time around your people, around Malik, around Don House, around JDs, and you finally get out there, and his voice cracked when he first went to talk. And I'm like, look, I don't want to turn a mountain into a molehill, but I heard that shit. Your voice cracked. That mm. really tell me you wasn't going to talk. You was just going to sit there, chill, let him talk his shit. I'm not going to say nothing. He mm. opens his mouth. I heard his voice crack. I'm like, all right, this dude really wasn't going to talk. Then he said it. Like, I wasn't even going to say nothing. And you're not giving direct answers. You're not behaving like a man who really believes he was cheated. He he not like not you're not, not, you're not addressing it. Like yo, address it, man. You think this dude cheated? Even if you don't have the proof, you still gonna move and act a certain way. And you're not doing none of that. You just trying to ride this press conference out. That's that was how what I got from it. Though ultimately, like we said earlier, it don't matter because this the heavyweight division. Every single one of these guys is one punch away from being knocked out. Don't matter what they say at a press conference. Don't mm -hmm. it, none of that matters.